Hi and welcome. Would you like to see what's in my medicine cabinet? Thanks for joining me today. My name is Sarah Peternell. I'm board certified in holistic nutrition. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services in Denver, Colorado. And I'm also a mom. So given that, I have a lot of clients and a lot of followers in social media who often ask, what's in your medicine cabinet, Sarah? Well, today, I've actually decided to give you an inside peek, especially because, well, it is cold and flu and COVID season, right? Kind of the triple whammy. There are things that we can be doing, things that we can have on hand to help keep ourselves and our families healthy. I have two kids, they're ages 12 and a half and 10 and a half. So they're a little bit easier to give some of the prophylactic and preventative types of medicine to versus when they were real little. Also, they're now old enough to swallow some pills and capsules, so I'm able to give them some of the supplements that I've always felt are the best foundation for their health. So our family takes a multivitamin, our family also takes probiotics, and our family also takes a few other wellness nutrients, especially this time of year. The first is that I'm a huge believer in the power of vitamin D. This is a D3 supplement that I get from Metagenics, and this is actually 5,000 IUs. This is the right amount for an adult. I personally take 5,000 IUs per day. And my husband, I set them out for him as well. My kids, on the other hand, they might take a couple of these each week just to keep their vitamin D levels adequate. This is a very high quality supplement and one that I do feel is essential, especially if you live in the Northern Hemisphere between the months of October and May. This is a great way to keep your vitamin D levels up, which can help with things like seasonal affective disorder and also can help to keep your immune system strong. In fact, there's research that shows that adequate levels of vitamin D in your bloodstream can be as effective or more effective than taking the flu shot against preventing against the flu. And you can find a link to that research article in the pinned comments down below. So if you don't already have some vitamin D for your family, I would highly recommend picking some up. I'll put a link to the vitamin D supplement from Metagenics that you can order in the pinned comments below. But you can also go to your natural food store, your health food store, and pick up vitamin D3. Again, the dosage for kids is between 1,000 and 2,000 IUs, which is international units per day for children and for adults, anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 international units per day. So check that out for sure. The second thing that we're taking a little bit extra of this year is zinc. So I've got some other resources and information about zinc. It's definitely one that you want to know about. This mineral is so important for a number of different reasons. In particular, we know that zinc is one of those nutrients that helps to support the immune system. And so again, my kids are a little older and they're actually able to swallow a capsule this size. This is just a 30 milligram dose. And so this is perfect again for adults and for my kids, I have them take it a couple of times each week. There are of course zinc lozenges, which are going to be much, much lower in terms of the dosage and maybe like around three to five milligrams, but that's a great amount that you can give to children as young as one years old. Something that they can um, chew on or suck on and get the benefits of, an, of additional zinc in their diet. All right, two things that I also have in my medicine cabinet that aren't really medicine. One is an infrared thermometer. You can't go wrong with this little guy. I just picked this up at the drugstore and it's really easy to use. You, I'm sure you've seen these everywhere you go right now, but basically all you do is you turn it on and you hold it up to the forehead and press the button and it gives you the temperature, which is a great way to take temperatures for anybody who may not be feeling well or you may suspect is running a fever. Why do you need to know if your child has a fever or if you have a fever? Well, fevers aren't necessarily a bad thing. First of all, fevers are our body's way of fighting off infection and our body's immune system needs to build heat in the body in order to kill off viruses, bacteria, and other pathogens. 
So don't fear a fever, but if you are dealing with a fever in your family, it's best to know how to work with it. So I actually keep on hand um, that we use all the time my book of homeopathic medicines and other remedies. And I find this to be very, very useful um, in working with my own family's health. Now, I'm not a homeopathic physician and I don't have um, training in homeopathy, but I have studied with many mentors, read lots of books and used homeopathy in my family for as long as my kids have been alive. And there are lots of different types of kits that you can get to help you have a good homeopathy um, remedy set on hand. So this is one that I just picked up at the health food store. You can also buy these online. And basically here, I've got some extra things in here. I'm just kind of emptying out. But basically what it is, is they'll give you kind of a set of some of the most helpful homeopathic remedies. And a lot of times they do come with their own little manufacturers, um, easy to use guidebook. But as I said, I have this homeopathic medicines and remedies book. And so if I know that someone in my family is perhaps running a fever and I want to help support their body naturally, I can go to this remedy set and based on symptoms, I can give them some of these little pillules, which are these tiny little white pellets um, that can you know, maybe help to just decrease some of the discomfort. In particular for fever, I have a remedy that was given to us by um, one of our um, homeopathic uh, physicians. And um, this is Apis Belladonna, which is for fever relief. Now, using this under the guidance of your physician is really the best recommendation. So you know how much to use, especially based on the age of your child. But this is pretty much our go-to, not because it gets rid of the fever, it helps the body's fever to work as best as it can to get rid of whatever it is that's bugging you or your child. So um, we do use a lot of homeopathic preparations and remedies in our family, but again, because I'm not trained, um, I'm not going to speak about the appropriate dosages or how to use these. I would encourage you, however, to maybe get a kit like this, check out a book from the library, or start doing some of your own research or seek out a homeopathic physician in your area so you can start to learn about this natural, safe, and really easy to use home remedy kit that helps to make your family and your children as comfortable as possible when they're not feeling well. All right, we wanna let the body work its magic. Let a fever run its course, unless of course it's getting too high, but the fever really is designed to help your child's immune system get stronger so they know what to fight off the next time that same pathogen comes along. So we use a lot of the homeopathic remedies, and in particular, you've probably heard of oscillococcinum. This um, is the kind of classic flu symptom homeopathic remedy. You can find these in your health food store in a box that looks like this, and I always have these on hand. Because basically, if a person in our family comes down with flu-like symptoms, I want them to have um, the remedy that's going to help their symptoms be less painful or less stressful for them while they're fighting off the infection. So this is a great remedy. Oscillococcinum works with your body to help quell some of the body aches, headaches, chills, fatigue, and of course it can also work with the body for fever. So definitely keep some of the oscillococcinum on hand and there are directions on the back of the box for how to best use it. I can tell you that oscillococcinum has been very helpful to our family, um, whether it's the true flu or not, when those symptoms have arisen over the years, that's definitely our go-to. All right, so I've talked a little bit about some of the homeopathic remedies that we use. I wanna share with you, um, as I said, two other um, things. I talked about my little handy dandy thermometer, our homeopathic kit, and then there are two more things that I definitely think every family should have in their medicine cabinet. The first is honey. This is actually a raw, propolis-rich Colorado honey, and it's made by a company here called Bjorns. Um, I always find these guys at the farmer's markets, and as you can see, we're down to the bottom because we have used this quite a bit um, for certain, you know, aches and pains and complaints as it pertains to like sore throats, stuffy noses, and maybe the beginnings of a cold. This honey is very, very, very thick. As you can see, if I turn it upside down, it will barely budge. 
It smells delicious. It's very, very rich in um, all of the natural benefits that you get from a raw, unpasteurized local honey. So it's rich in B vitamins, it's rich in enzymes. And as I said, this one is the double propolis, which means it has a lot of those immune supporting or immune boosting properties. And in fact, um, it helps, propolis helps to combat against viruses and bacteria. And um, it can really help to kind of act as a barrier if taken um, in some warm water, or maybe just take a spoonful of it or add it to some nice warm herbal tea to help um, coat a throat that maybe is feeling a little bit scratchy or a little bit dry or maybe like the beginnings of something coming on like strep throat or something else. So um, our kids have had strep throat quite a few times and yes, in the past we've actually tried some of the antibiotic um, uh, medical treatments when needed, but what I found is that by doing a propolis honey at the first signs of a sore throat, they don't get strep anymore. And in fact, we haven't had to use antibiotics for that for a really long time, which is great news. So you might want to check out looking for this type of honey in your local area. Now I also have an essential oil blend here. This one's called Nature's Shield and it's by the Now brand. You might see this in some other, you know, pot potential, you know, formulas by like Young Living or doTERRA. And this essential oil blend is basically what we would call an immune supportive blend. Um, it is made up of clove bud oil, lemon oil, cinnamon bark oil, eucalyptus, and rosemary. I think the smell is quite amazing. Um, if I can get the lid off of it. Oops. Um, this has kind of what I would call a distinct, almost like Christmassy smell. I think that's because of the cloves and cinnamon and rosemary. But I use this both in a diffuser in my house during cold and flu season. I also use it to clean surfaces. So I'll just use like a regular, you know, um, natural antibiotic cleaning wipe or um, uh, antiviral cleaning wipe, some of the um, like seventh generation, and I'll just sprinkle a couple little drops of this so I can clean off door handles or light fixtures or countertops or toilet handles because it really does help to combat against some of the, you know, kind of viral types of um, infections. And it's really just kind of good for being a protective blend. So breathing it in through the air, having it on surfaces, it just kind of keeps all the yucky stuff away without necessarily compromising the good bacteria and the good microbiome that our body needs to have a healthy, supportive immune system. So definitely you can find this um, online and you can also find it in your health food store. I love this stuff. And ours just lives right by the sink. Um, so I can use it all the time. I even like to just put a little bit on my hands and just kind of breathe it in. So if you, if you're one of my clients and you've come to my office before, you'll recognize this smell. All right. So I'm going to keep going here. I know this is a lot of information. Thanks for sticking with me this long. The next is um, hydration tablets. This is an electrolyte formula by the company called Noon, um, N-U-U-N, as you can see here. And this is actually their immunity support blend. This is a really great thing to give kiddos who maybe are getting slightly dehydrated, um, adults as well. But, you know, sometimes when your kids, maybe if they've had a tummy bug or if they're um, just running a fever, they're not feeling so great. Of course, I can get this again. Just wanted, oh, here we go. I just wanted to show you what they look like. They're little tablets that you can just drop in a water bottle. They smell pretty good. They're, you know, kind of naturally sweetened with fruit juice or whatever. But they are electrolytes, so they help to replenish... Um, all of the minerals that can be lost if there's vomiting or diarrhea or fever or any type of dehydration. In fact, I would recommend these sort of prophylactically just to take some electrolyte um, in your water, in your kids' water, really all season long because A, hydration is key to staying well and also having good electrolytes means that you're getting that hydration into the cells where your body needs it most so that if something does come along, your body is really well uh, situated, right? Think about your cells being like big juicy grapes. We don't want any of those dried up crusty old raisin cells. So um, these are great things to have on hand and certainly really important um, to get your kid hydrated. You can even dissolve one of these for little guys and put them in a popsicle mold with water, right? So mix up your electrolyte, put it in a popsicle mold, stick it in the freezer, and you can make a noon popsicle for them. All right, I'm getting to the end. 
Um, if my kids are kind of fighting something off, I'm a huge fan of the Wish Garden Herbs. I'll put a link also in the pinned comments so you can find this particular product because I just love this one. It's called Kick It Immune for Kids. This is, um, an, it's called the Optimal Natural Immune Response um, Herbal Formula for Kids. And it's in glycerin, so it's not in an alcohol tincture preparation like a lot of the herbal um, remedies are. It's easy to take. It tastes great. My kids have taken this forever and ever. You know, it's not like a yucky medicine. Um, they're very familiar with this taste. And all you have to do is... For children over one year old, two droppers full, you can go right under the tongue or you can mix it in a little bit of water. And you can do this several times throughout the day to help support and strengthen their immune system. The blend is of elderflower, echinacea, calendula, yerba sante, and hawthornberry and osha, all of which are great for respiratory, lung, and immune system. Now, speaking of elderberry, I'm sure you've heard of this, right? Everybody's been kind of posting the articles and links and blogs and information about black elderberry syrup. Well, I could not agree more. Black elderberry syrup is a really great immune system herbal preparation, and there is research to support the use of this as a prophylactic immune-boosting remedy starting right at the beginning of the fall. So it's very thick. You can see it's almost like uh, almost like a taffy like syrup and so I just put it on a teaspoon and have my kids take this once per day um, it's great for just basically building up the immune system so that it should something really nasty come along their immune system is prepared and ready to launch all of those good T cells and B cells and all of the um, natural immunity that our body needs to quickly and effectively ward off viruses and bacterial infections. So it's just meant to be one teaspoon per day. Um, if uh, during an infection you wanna increase this to a few teaspoons per day, that won't hurt. You can do that for a short duration, like a week, just to kind of boost up um, the immune system a little bit more. Now, um, I'm not gonna go into too much of the detail, but there is some evidence that this is not the right thing for coronavirus. So, um, Let's just say that, you know, kind of your common cold um, and upper respiratory. But this may actually be something that overstimulates uh, the respiratory if a person were to get COVID. Um, and that could lead to some of those things that we're reading about, like cytokine storms, etc. So just use caution with this. Um, you can use it for prophylactic all season. But if you are sure someone in the family has a positive COVID test, this goes on the shelf for a little while just to kind of keep the immune system from over responding and actually causing damage um, or an over response in any of the lung tissue. It's highly unlikely that having taken this prophylactically is then going to cause problems should a person contract coronavirus. But I would just say, you know, use this with caution um, if you know that you're dealing with that. And of course, consult your pediatrician or your physician. Um, okay, so we've talked about that and that. Lastly, because of course we can't forget tummy bugs. Um, and you know, tummy bugs are generally something because we ate something that had something on it, right? Like salad that had a little bit of extra E. coli or, you know, meat that was maybe cooked and had been starting to collect its bacteria or something that went the fecal oral route because of touching surfaces and whatnot. Usually like a tummy flu isn't really a flu. It's actually a bacterial infection that causes, you know, kind of a food um, poisoning response like diarrhea, vomiting, upset stomach. So the very first line is to take um, digestive enzymes. You can see those here. Anytime somebody in my family is complaining of like indigestion, sour stomach, upset stomach, this is the first thing that we go to. Even for adults, the kids chewable is just totally fine. These are like great flavored. They're really little. I've been giving these to my kids since they were one years old and had like two front teeth. They dissolve pretty quickly. Um, and it can really help to kind of coat and soothe and get things moving. So if someone has ingested, yikes, a bacteria, this helps to kind of help the body to process it and get it out. Um, it is enzymes, right? So it's from kind of that polysaccharide blend of different um, enzymes uh, and also lipases. Um, and peptidase, which helps to break down 
um, both foods, but also the bad stuff. And one more herb that we love to use are these Gaia Kids alcohol-free formulas for, for the tummy. So you saw my Wish Garden herbs for the immune system support. This one's just for tummies, and it's mainly chamomile. Um, you can also do a chamomile tea. You can just make it weak for kiddos and let it cool off um, so they can drink. But it also has fennel and some lemon balm, which is not right. That was in the other one as well. Spearmint and catnip and ginger, all of which are really good tummy tamers. So a um, couple drops of this either in some water or right under the tongue for older kids. That can usually kind of help to soothe and calm down some of the rumbly, bubbly, gurgly, gassy types of things. As I said, for dehydration and vomiting, you definitely want to make sure staying hydrated, right? And having some kind of just simple foods, um, you know, broths, definitely. Um, a good bone broth on hand that you can warm up and the kids can sip on also just for kind of helping to soothe that tummy. But the bottom line here is that having a good home medicine cabinet or remedy kit for your family made up of a lot of these natural types of supports that I've shown you here today is, is what we call first line. First line therapy where you know you're not dealing with something super serious you know that you can manage it at home, right? So we're talking about low-grade fevers. We're talking about um, the common cold. We're talking about upset tummies. Um, we're talking about generally immune system support and also prevention of some of the bigger bad stuff. But if you're dealing with something more serious, I know this shouldn't need to be said, but I am going to finish with this. You need to go into the doctor, right? Especially in this time of year, if potentially it's COVID, if potentially it's flu A or B or something more serious, you need to get in touch with your pediatrician or your family physician. Do what's best for your family, but think about incorporating some of these options to help you deal with come what may during this you know, colder, darker, shorter day season that is also, of course, full of a lot of joy and beauty as the holidays lie ahead, but keep your family well. And I hope that these tips will give you some great insight and great support ideas so that you can enjoy the rest of this winter. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'm really glad you're here, and I'll be back with more videos really soon. Take care. Bye.